And so then finally, just want to say a little bit about technology, the internet, how it's going to change organizations, and just a couple of thoughts about where public services might be headed in two critical areas, one with aging and one with education. Uh, we talked a lot about technology, uh, about the spread of the internet. I've got a book that's coming out this week called We Think, uh, which is about the impact that the web is having on culture and organization. It's called We Think because the generation growing up with the web, their motto is we think, therefore we are. Not I think, therefore I am, but we think, therefore we are. Because they're growing up in a much more socialized, collaborative kind of atmosphere. So I, uh, in the process of writing this, commissioned a, a young artist to do some illustrations for the book. Her boyfriend is a video maker. And so then I got him to make a video, which I posted on YouTube. So you've heard of pop videos. This is a book video. It's the first book to be published with an accompanying video on YouTube in this way. So very proudly, I, I called my 12-year-old son uh, and got him to come over to my office, which is on the other side of the garden in a shed, and said, come and look at this thing, thinking that I had finally done something that would impress him. Uh, and so I clicked on YouTube and started playing the video, and I said, look, this is my YouTube video. It's, in fact, it's on my YouTube channel. I've got a YouTube channel devoted to me. And uh, it's about four minutes long, this video. After about two minutes, he got up, he patted me on the head, and he said, very good, Dad. And he walked out, completely withering in his pity for me. Um, but this is a world, I mean, the one suggestion I would make is don't look at technology. Just don't. Don't get bamboozled by Wi-Fi, mobile, Blu-ray, all the rest of it. Look at what people want to do. Don't look at the stuff. Look at what they do. What do they want to do? They want to participate. They want to rate, rank, find, search. They want to take part. They want to be part of the action. They want to be players, not spectators. They want to be able to share and connect with other people. They want to collaborate. And they want recognition. Why do people get involved in computer games and open source and wiki this and wiki that? What they are seeking often is recognition for the value of what they're contributing. And those are the basic ingredients of the kind of organizations that this world will create. Participate, share, collaborate, recognize. If you can harness that in the way that Barnet Council works with its partners and outside, then you'll have an interesting, powerful, economic model. Because when you look at the organizations that are using this stuff well, and they are usually startups that come from some passionate uh, starting point, they're not usually incumbents, they, they look very different from a traditional organization, and they have a really powerful economic logic. So this is, um, this is what organizations you know, we're used to thinking of them as, we're used to thinking of them as, as hierarchies like that, or maybe they, maybe they're, you know, they're kind of, you know, a bit like that. And maybe they've got bits of outsourcing that make them look a bit more networked and all the rest of it. Just try in your mind's eye to draw a picture of Wikipedia. Five employees, uh, 1.6 million articles in English, 400,000 in German, more than a thousand, uh, more than a thousand articles in more than a hundred languages. You know, it's got problems, but the fact is that if you're in Africa, you now have access to a free encyclopedia on a global scale that hadn't been available before. How, what does it look like? It kind of looks like this. It kind of looks like a, some sort of organic thing that grows through a community. Or another way of thinking of it is it looks a bit like a bird's nest, where people have just put their different pieces down. And because it's being organized in the right kind of clever way, it all adds up. What these organizations do not look like is pyramids or hierarchies. They look completely different. And if you want to mobilize this kind of stuff 
and the way people work with it, then you'll need an organisation that looks more like that than like that. So how do you pull all that together? What, what might it mean? Well, first of all, just let two examples, what, what it might mean. The first is ageing and social care. So we are now at the early stages, uh, and you're involved, in a revolution in social care provided by the state, which is called personal budgets and self-directed support. Um, and that's going to change not just the process of allocating social care, but critically the role of people in commissioning services. So the work that I've done on that, um, the most inspiring aspect of that story is not that there is a change in the process by which funds are allocated, it's what happens to people when they get the money, because they suddenly become searchers. It's a sort of I can thing. They start looking for better deals. 80% of people with personal budgets commission things that the state does not provide. So what happens if you've got hundreds of people with personal budgets in Barnet is you're mobilizing the intelligence of hundreds of commissioners to find better solutions for themselves. And if you can get them to participate and collaborate, then you're connecting those ideas together. That means that the whole idea that the public sector commissions on block or other contracts becomes absolutely redundant. Actually, what you're doing is allowing people to commission in an eBay style their own solutions within the right kind of frameworks of regulation, inspection, safety, so on and so forth. Where does that get you to? Well, it gets you, if you're in Richmond, where it gets you to is this, which is actually the proportion of people in Richmond who are on personal budgets provided by the state is very small as a proportion of the total ageing population. So what you're doing is putting people receiving state support and people who are self-funding on the same level. That then creates a new challenge, which is, do we, are we only interested in the quality of life of people receiving state support? No, if you're Barnet, you've got to be interested in the quality of life of all old people in Barnet. How do you offer a new universal service to them, which might be about advice, brokering, information, peer-to-peer, -peer, whatever? It's a completely different kind of mindset. So there is a revolution going on, personal budgets. It is going to have a big impact. But what it's going to open up is the need for much more integrated, comprehensive services for older people in communities like this. A much wider market in leisure services, in support, in information and personal services. Most old people uh, use resources between 10 and 4 o'clock during the day, when families and working people aren't around. There is a huge opportunity to create a new 10 to 4 economy. So much of the um, emphasis recently has been on the nighttime economy or the 24-7 economy. Actually, one of the big opportunities will be this 10 to 4 economy where lots of old people will want to be out and about and doing things and feeling safe. So, don't think that personal budgets are the end of a story of what you will need to do with ageing. 